Hi everybody, welcome back to Mando Lessons. My name is Baron Collins Hill. In this week's lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at the chord structure for the classic Irish jig, Swallowtail Jig. It's one of the first jigs many people learn, uh, and one of the first Irish tunes in general people learn. It's a great tune. The chord structure is very simple, so we're gonna jump into it, and I'm gonna give you a couple different ways that you can approach backing up this tune. If you don't know the melody, check out mandolessons.com. I already have a lesson up there where I teach the tune by ear. I have tablature, standard notation, play along jams, all sorts of resources. I also have a simple to complex lesson where I talk about spicing up the tune a little bit as well as a play along jam where you can put the chords that we're gonna be covering today along with some of those ideas in the simple to complex and start jamming. So without further ado, let's jump into some chord talk. The first way that I would approach playing chords behind this tune uh, is with the most simple kind of double stoppy droney chords that I could because those are going to stay out of the way of the melody. So I want to play something that's not going to take up a lot of space uh, and kind of cover up that melody because you wanna, always want to be able to hear the melody. So I would start out as a starting place. <laughs> uh, with these little double stop shapes that you can kind of drone on. So the first shape is gonna be our E minor shape, fourth fret on the G string, second on the D, that's a B and an E note. And then our D chord is going to be second fret on the G string and an open D note, it's an A and a D. And we'll go back and forth between the two. Now, the next thing to do is get our right hand moving. So we're gonna get this little jig picking pattern under our fingers. It's down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. So you have to double down a little bit and that first down is gonna be accented. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, in little groups of three. That's gonna sound like this. D, D, back to E minor. So that pattern we did right there is the whole structure for both the A and B parts of the tune. Um, I'm, I'll let you do that over the, uh, you know, find a recording of the tune. You can find it at mandolessons.com and you can play those chords behind it. Now, taking that idea, that's gonna be, you know, a really great place to start. And that stays out of the way of that melody much better than if we use kind of stock E minor chord, open two, two, open and stock D chord, two, open, open, two. And if I try to sing that behind it. Versus. When you play those kind of abbreviated chord shapes on just the G and D strings, that melody pops out a lot more. That said, those are pretty uh, kind of simplified versions and I would happily do that, but if you're looking for something a little more kind of uh, harmonically complex, we can add in a third string and use a different shape. So we're gonna use this, this E minor shape. Uh, it's fourth fret again on the G string, but then fifth fret with the pointer finger on the D string, so four is a B, five is a G, and then our last note is on the A string. It's gonna be the seventh fret on the A string. Now you can either play that with your ring finger or with your pinky, really doesn't matter. Four, five, seven is what we're after. And then our D major shape is gonna be two on the G string again, and then four on the D. And again, you can play that with Uh, the, your middle or ring finger. I tend to use 
middle, but if you need to do that, uh, so, ooh, that's fine. Um, but ultimately we're going for second fret on the G, fourth fret on the D, and then fifth fret on the A. It's a nice D major, I love that D major shape. Those two together, we have, again, four, five, seven, then down to two, four, five. Four, five, seven. Two, four, five. Four, five, seven. And that becomes It gives you a little bit more full sounding chords for the music theory nerds out there. It's because our first two double stoppy chords did not have the third in either of those chords, and this voicing does have the third in the chords. That doesn't mean anything to you. Don't worry about it. Uh, but there are some music theory lessons on my website that might help explain that, like how chords are built. All right, so now we have two different options. We can go... Those kind of double stoppy. And then those closed shapes, E minor. Now, if you want to get really fancy, and I wouldn't do this all the time, but maybe one time through, um, if you're in a smaller ensemble where you know a little bit more delicacy is going to be able to be heard, this probably won't work in a large session situation. But if you're, you know, sitting around with a friend or two, you can use these really high shapes. These are fun. Um, so it's the same idea as this D here. We have four, five, seven. That sort of shape in there. We're gonna bring that up. Uh, let's see, where is it gonna be? It's gonna be, let's see, 9, 10, 12. Again, uh, you can use either finger in there. So this is our E minor. And you can add on the G string another ninth fret. So our total, our full shape is 9, 9, 10, 12. This is sort of what I think of as like the classic bar shape of a minor chord. That's our E minor, 9, 9, 10, 12. And then our D, we're going to shift down and do 7, 7, 9, 10. And then back up to 9, 9, 10, 12. Down to 7, 7, 9, 10. Those shapes are going to give you a really delicate, kind of twinkly sound that, again, is probably going to get lost in in larger, kind of louder groups. But it's great for um, you know smaller ensembles where that sort of delicacy is going to shine through. All right, so let us mix and match those a little bit. So let's do our little double stop shape first. So we have four and two, then two and open. Just on the G and D strings, four and two, two and open, four and two. New shape, four, five, seven, two, four, five, four, five, seven, two, four, five, four, five, seven. Up high, nine, nine, ten, twelve, seven, seven, nine, ten, nine, nine, ten, twelve, seven, seven, nine, ten and up high. So mix and match those. It's a great way to find a couple different chord um, shapes and chord voicings on the instrument. And I figured I would uh, jump into that idea because this is a two chord song that's pretty repetitive. All right, so I hope you found some interesting and useful little chord voicings and ideas in there. A great thing about those, you know, the second two sets of shapes, the, the fully voiced E minors and Ds, is it's a great way to kind of get some bar chord ideas under your fingers, which I have more lessons on over at mandolessons.com. Um, and then you can start moving those around because they don't use any open strings. Hopefully you found that helpful. Go check out mandolessons.com. Uh, there's a couple ways to support the website. Links in the description. All my lessons are free. And uh, 
lots of resources over there. So, uh, you know, get as much out of this as you can. Get, uh, you know, play a bunch of Swallowtail Jig, play the melody, play the chords, work on some of those simple to complex ideas, get into that uh, play along jam video and have fun with it. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.